Are, this is the question now. Are there aspects of the county budget that you think are too large or areas that need to be reprioritized given current needs? Well, I personally haven't seen the numbers for each department of, of what they are or where they're at. Uh, are they too large? Are they too small? I mean, as a, if I were in any of the departments, I would always want more because I can do more with more funding. So to, for me to say that the uh, sheriff's department has too much money or the highway department has too much money or the social services has too much money, I mean, uh, I don't, I haven't seen their budget. I, I don't, uh, so I haven't been a part of it. So I can't, I, I can just tell you that. I would uh, say that probably until you see what the numbers are, then I can tell you. Okay. Current needs. Uh, I agree with Eric. You can't, if you don't see in the numbers, how do you know where to, where to begin? Uh, maybe, but you also got inflation. Everything costs more every year. You can't, you can't deny that. Uh, I don't know if there's any, anything different we can do. I mean, it's going to be a, a change. I know that the, it's a big number, but I think we're going to say it's, uh, without seeing the numbers in front of you, I'm not going to make a decision here. I hate to make this sound kind of like a broken record here, but I, I have to come down the, the side of the gentleman to the right of me that I haven't seen those buttons. And uh, to comment them at this point, comment on, on them at this point, if I may be kind of irresponsible. If I don't know the facts, I'm not going to speak to them. But uh, I do know that the, the county appears to be running smoothly and, uh, and at a reduction of, of funding would affect that, it would hamper the, the delivery of services. Um, I have a question that. First of all, no. We, uh, I just got, uh, I'm part of uh, our budget committee for the highway department. Um, we budgeted actually at zero percent for our, but there is health, health budget like for uh, insurance that we can't control, and, uh, and uh, what is the other thing? But anyway, oh, raises for the people. The, the, when we budget as a highway department, we can only budget for what we're looking for to do work. Our budget changes due to the, uh, the state aid money we get from the state. Some years, uh, our budget uh, is uh, 15 million, $18 million is what we got in our, in our budget. The next year, we've hardly got anything because we don't have a project. Like the dorm project costs twelve million dollars. Uh, you don't. Uh, that that's where we had eighteen million. We state funding then for that, and the state pays for part of that. Uh, I don't think uh, law enforcement uh, has enough money, uh, basically, to uh, do everything they need to do after touring some of the county, and I've toured most of the county more than once in my job, there's areas where they need help, and uh, when I don't see any budgets that are, are out of line, but uh, now I'm being told back to stop. <laughs> 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 actually one of the reasons I think that I could do a really nice job for the city because I have a lot of experience testifying, I have a lot of experience at the legislature, and I think that that, that would be useful and necessary for this. Um, Breckenridge receives more local government aid than most cities, actually. I think we're about 18th in the state. We receive over a million dollars in local government aid. Local government aid makes up 53% of our budget. If the bill that the House had proposed last year had passed, we would have been cut by over a million dollars. Um, that's a huge amount of our budget that, that we really just simply can't afford to lose. So I would, I would continue to advocate to the legislature. I would testify. I would lobby. I'd work with the agencies that we work with and that we're members of for those purposes to make sure that our, our local government aid does not, does not get decreased or get cut. And, and I think it's something you have to pay very, very close attention to because it has been on the chopping block and it was cut in 2002 and it still hasn't been restored to the full amount from then. 
So I think we not only have to advocate for it to be restored, I think that's about 45 million to restore it, but we have to make sure that the city of Breckenridge doesn't lose what they have because it would be a tremendous blow to people here to lose over a million dollars in our budget. Well, like Stacy stated, it's the, the backbone of the budget. The city of Breckenridge needs local government aid. We need to do whatever we can to promote it at the state level so they don't cut us. I mean, just the simple fact that we get everyone here to write a letter to your, your state representative and your state legislature, that makes a big difference in retaining it. We need to go to the cities, talk to the people. Um, it's not that far down there. All of us could do that if we wanted to, if we can get an audience with them. But it's, it's something we have to have in the city of Breckenridge, and we have to do what's necessary so we don't lose it. What's your platform? What issues are you running on? Well, there are a lot of important issues uh, in Minnesota, but some of the key issues that we need to face are, uh, first of all, uh, tax reform and some tax relief that was in the tax bill this year that uh, was vetoed, yet passed by 89% of the legislature. That needs to get passed uh, uh, next year as a priority in session. A tax relief for uh, small business owners, property tax relief for farmers, and tax relief for families across Minnesota with federal conformity. Health care is another huge issue. Uh, the Minsure system in Minnesota uh, is, is a colossal failure. Not something I supported. Uh, we talked about many of the issues that were predictable that we are now unfortunately seeing. But we need to roll up our sleeves to come up with better solutions to make health care affordable not unaffordable, which we've unfortunately been experiencing with 50% uh, increases. 30. And uh, we've seen continued, continued uh, costs of health care. So those are key issues. Other, lastly, infrastructure for roads and water infrastructure for our communities across the state. Hey, Jeff, what's your platform and what issues are you running on? Um, a couple things. Um, we're going to sound a lot similar here today. Tori and I, we do share a lot of things together in fields, but healthcare is very important. Um, like Tori said, Minsure is a disaster. Um, what Minnesota had, here's what's interesting. Minnesota had a program that the nation could have uh, followed with MinCare and other programs. Um, so we need to look at going back to that. We also need to open up the borders. I'm a business owner. I understand the value of competition. And uh, Minnesota, we need to be able to go out as, as um, clients, customers of insurance, to be able to go to other states um, and not just stay within in the states. Healthcare, we need to look at malpractice reform to help lower costs there too. In regards with, um, we had a wonderful bonding bill that we passed out of the house that put tremendous money into um, water projects, infrastructure, Breckenridge, um, if that got passed, we'd receive that $5 million with the PFA. And um, another thing that's extremely important to me, because I'm a business owner, if we go from Canada down to Iowa, we do not see a, one of the communities on the Minnesota side larger than the Dakotas. We need to attract business owners. We had a great tax plan that was passed by 89%. And one of those things in that um, plan was to give significant <coughs> uh, property tax breaks to small business owners in greater Minnesota, across the state, but greater Minnesota would have the great benefit, greatest benefit. Thank you. you know, flight control is very important. I went through Browns Valley. One of the things that's important to me when I was mayor, our goal was to do no harm downstream. The current plan that we are seeing up in Fargo-Moorhead um, does not satisfy that. Um, I'm a big believer of impoundments, um, natural impoundments. Tori and I worked on a project in Herman that we just didn't get quite past. I think um, we will be able to, within the next two years and so forth, to do that. Impalments, natural impalments, God-given impalments will help with the flood diversion. Healthcare, I've already, comp um, already talked about that. We need it more affordable. I'm a business owner. I have competitors. I have not raised my prices in the last five years. I've found ways to save money because I have tremendous competition. Because um, we um, are online and we're a national company um, with that. Um, what was it? job creation? Um, in regards, there's many things that we can do, but we wanted to start with that. Um, most people do not know that the state of Minnesota 
has a property tax on all businesses. What we want, what we pass out of the House, GOP House, DFL Senate control, um, was to eliminate the first 1,000 valuation of that um, business of property tax. And that would tremendously help Breckenridge, Browns Valley, Wheaton, Ortonville, Elbow Lake, and other communities in 12A. Um, Starbucks. There's some other things we can do, but that really helped in Dayton Detroit. That is a lot. Uh, I've talked just a little on the health care issue. Uh, we need to uh, extend uh, some of the uh, tax credits to uh, citizens that want to go outside of insurance and buy from the private market, bring in more competition, open up the state borders. Uh, we can buy car insurance across state lines. Why can't we buy health insurance across state lines? Nobody knows it better than anybody that lives in Wilkin County, in Breckenridge, because uh, you do a lot across the border, as, as does Wapaton uh, across the border here. So we should uh, be, be looking at those types of uh, op options that are common sense solutions. Job creation, we've got to be sensitive to the tax rates for small businesses. We have a tax bill that needs to be passed that would have given the first $100,000, I think you misspoke, Jeff, uh, you said 1,000, I think it's 100,000 evaluation that, uh, bias towards rural Minnesota because our values of uh, buildings out here aren't uh, in the millions of dollars like they are in the Twin Cities. They get the 100000 there too, but our buildings will great, much greater be benefited by that. Uh, so we all know uh, the tax issues. Uh, businesses will travel uh, across borders, and uh, I see it all the time, door knocking, meeting with folks, and, and so those are some, some key issues. Infrastructure is another thing. The state can be a big partner in that. Having good infrastructure will help attract jobs to our rural communities and keep uh, them vibrant. Okay. Okay. We're moving to our next question, and we'll start with Jeff. What are Minnesota's greatest needs, and how can you fulfill them? Our greatest asset is its people. That is our greatest asset. And um, I'm an optimistic person. One of the challenges that we are having in 12A is we are losing young people to North Dakota. Um, I am a business-minded person. I've ran a business for 26 years. If I would move my business from downtown Browns Valley to over just three miles into South Dakota, I would see significant benefits. But I'm a die-hot Minnesotan. We need to make it easier for business owners. It's a one-person, two-people business, sort of like ours, which is 12 people that we um, have the pleasure and honor to serve as business owners and help those families. When you bring that entrepreneur spirit, they hire people, and it, it starts that chain effect. So very much in favor. That is our greatest asset is its people. We have to look at ways. And it, it didn't happen like this. There's people in the audience that remember that Breckenridge was the same size or bigger than Wapaton 50, 60 years ago. It doesn't change overnight with the snap of the finger, but I'm a very progressive in regards with um, attracting I, I'm entrepreneurs. I understand the challenge that small businesses, owners have. I face it every single day. Well, Minnesota's uh, greatest uh, needs, uh, probably some of the things we've talked about, healthcare is probably uh, near the top of the list, if not the top of the list, making it affordable. Uh, we have got to open up some new opportunities and find new ways to address this. Uh, Minsure uh, with the announcement of about a 50, it's up to 60% increase this year on top of two years of uh, staggering increases already. Uh, it is it is merely unaffordable. And other health care policies are as well. So we are, we are a little hamstrung because of the Federal Affordable Care Act, uh, better known as the Unaffordable Care Act. But in Minnesota, we have got to uh, rethink this. Uh, everything we've tried to propose, uh, unfortunately, the governor and Senate DFL leadership has, has just said, no, we're going to stick with this. I think maybe this year with this 50% increase, that will be re-looked at finally. I will keep beating that drum. Uh, transportation, I've mentioned <coughs> before, that's very critical to our farmers, to our uh, small businesses that, that bring those grains and 30. other products to market. And uh, that's another key issue. Uh, education continues to always be on the forefront. We have to just continue uh, making sure that rural education is funded well through the formula and treated treated uh, equitable and uh, rural broadband I guess would be another big issue in rural Minnesota but like Jeff said we our biggest asset is the citizens and the entrepreneurial spirit that we have and we just need to do things to not break that spirit as long as you've got that spirit 
uh, we can get a lot of things done. I've got that type of can-do attitude and approach uh, issues and problems that way.